Hello Camp Evergreen. I am glad that all of you are here and I'm really excited to be able to share um, a little bit of a journey that I've been on with God for a very long time that I was asked to share that's really special um, to my heart um, because of what God has done in my life. For those of you that don't know me, um, I'm Sarah Otremba. I've been going to Evergreen Bible Camp since I was like eight years old as a camper and as soon as I was old enough I started counseling as well being on staff and I've, I've loved it I took a chunk of time off after I was married and I was able to go back a couple of years ago I'm not um, able to make it this year but I'm really excited to still be able to share a little bit of myself and just to make a couple uh, <coughs> connections uh, Phyllis Bartell is my aunt her and my mom are sisters so Mark Cannon and Luke Cannon are my brothers too. So shout out to you guys and hi, Mabel. Um, I wanted to, well, first I'll just, yeah, share a little bit of, of who I am. But when I was in high school, um, or I guess as far back as I can remember what I was after in life, I had the life goal of getting married young and having babies. That's all I've ever wanted is to get married and have kids and be a stay-at-home mom. <clears throat> and, um, you know, I was kind of boy crazy in high school and um, I actually, there was a part of me that wanted that because I knew it was good and I think God just designed me to want that. But there was a part of me that had a really bad attitude about it. Um, I have just kind of had the mindset of wanting to be the one to do it right, to be the one that looked good and, um, kind of did the holy thing. There's a lot of family members that I have that ended up having kids before they were married. And I know that's very, very common nowadays. And I had a really, um, prideful attitude that I was going to be one to do it right. And I was going to be the first one to not have any kids until after I was married and um, I'd only ever be with one man and that's a really really good thing to want but I and I didn't realize it till years later but <clears throat> the heart attitude that I had about that desire to get married and have kids was just really prideful um, and selfish <clears throat> but anyways that's where my mind was at love kids was kind of boy crazy wanted to get married and so anyways um, I graduated high school in 2012 and ended up going to Oak Hills Christian College up in Bemidji and I met my husband there and I ended up marrying him less than a year after I graduated high school. So graduated high school in um, June of 2012 and I got married in March of 2013. So we got married pretty quickly after um, we met and I thought, great, this is wonderful. My life goals are on track. I'm 19 years old. I got married. Next thing is having kids. I'm going to have everything that I want in life, right? Um, so my plan was working out, right? And so we um, were, we basically decided to start having, trying to have kids right away. And I didn't think that would be any issues. Um, you know, my family members have never had issues having, well, there have been some miscarriages and such, but my sisters have kids, my mom has kids, my, you know, um, not really any issues in, in my family. So I figured that that's how it goes. You get married and you have kids right away. <clears throat> um, well, we were trying for quite some time and wasn't working out, um, didn't really know what was going on. So we started looking into some things. We, you get so much advice and so many things that you can do or that you should do differently from a lot of different people. You get a lot of opinions and we tried changing our health in a lot of ways, trying to eat the right things, not eat the right things, take, take certain kind of vitamins or, you know, get some natural help to be able to do that. And it just wasn't working. And it was really heartbreaking because that's all I'd ever wanted. And that's in a way what I thought that I deserved, right? I deserve to have kids because I did everything right. 
I got married before I was ever sleeping with a man. So I, if anyone deserves to have kids, that's me, right? And so I just was, was, was heartbreaking year after year after year of not having kids and hearing all this advice from so many people about what we need to do differently. <clears throat> and well, if you only do this, then this will happen or this worked for somebody else. And really well-meaning people just loved us and wanted to help us out. So I don't blame any of them, but it's just hard to hear the same thing over and over and ask or answer all the same questions that were asked and um, not get what I wanted. <clears throat> and Anyways, it came to a point where I realized that I was not, I was not happy uh, with life. I was not enjoying what God had given me. And it was just always this, what can I do next to have kids? What can I do next to have kids? Maybe I should try this. And it was not a peaceful life um, at all. Not from the outside, but just internally, it was just this constant, what can I do next? I need to do this to have kids. And it came to a point where I just realized I am, I have so much to be thankful for. So much to be thankful for that God has given me a wonderful husband that loves the Lord. And we just have a wonderful marriage relationship. Not that any marriage is perfect or anything, but <clears throat> absolutely love him. You know, I'm strong and young and healthy. Um, just so many good things that I could list. I'm part of an absolutely wonderful church community. Love my family. Um, so many good things in life that I was not slowing down to enjoy. And the main thing being the relationship with my husband. Like I'm so focused on trying to have kids that it was what God, where God had me at the time just wasn't enough to make me happy, to help me just rest in him. And I realized that and I was like, I'm done. I am, I'm tired of not being happy. I'm tired of not enjoying what God has given me. I'm tired of always trying to do the next thing <clears throat> to get what I want, which is kids. And at that point we had been married for, I would say like seven years when I finally got to that point of just letting go. And so, you know, I didn't know anything at the time as far as why we, you know, weren't having kids, but I just decided, you know, I need to let that dream go. I just need to accept the fact that <clears throat> we can't have kids and I'm just going to enjoy what God has given me. And it was a really, it almost felt like mourning a loss because this dream is something that I had held on to for like before high school. Right. Um, and so, so to let go of that dream that I had had for 10, 15 years, my whole life, I don't know, um, was, was really, really heartbreaking. Um, <clears throat> and I cried for a couple days, but then I just felt like such an overwhelming peace, an overwhelming peace that I was like, whoa, this is what I needed. I needed to let go of that and just accept the lot that God has given me. <clears throat> um, and I did, I, I really, really enjoyed so much peace that year with just being married to my husband and and living life where God had us. Um, we decided about a year later um, to get some testing done to really just figure out, because even though I, I had let that go, we still wanted to like, we're getting at that age where, okay, we if we wanna have kids and we wanna take a next step to have kids, whether it be adopting or get some like medical help to do that, um, we kind of needed to, to figure out because I was 26 at that time, I think, maybe. Um, <clears throat> kind of need to figure out what was really the issue so we can, we can move on. So we got some testing done and we learned that it, it, it would be basically impossible for us to have kids, um, which I kind of already figured. I figured at this point, eight years in, if it hadn't happened yet, that makes sense. I was kind of expecting that, but it was it was a kind of a final, um, I guess you could say, closing the door on that, an official door that again, you know, even after a year of, um, a year later of just letting go of that dream, then when it was real, um, I kind of went through that grieving process again, just 
mourning the loss, like, okay, now it's official. Um, but it was easier the second time around and was able to just let that go and enjoy again what, what God had for us. And so then it was just life with my husband and so, so many things at that point, eight years of our marriage that we, you know, have been able to do that I'm so, so thankful for that we would never have been able to do. Just really build a deep, solid foundation in our relationship. Both of us grow, us growing so much individually in our walks with the Lord and then, excuse me, together in our relationship with each other and with the Lord. Um, and being able to be involved with the youth at um, my, our church that I don't think I would be as heavily involved in with the high schoolers had I been busy with my own kids. Um, and being able to, we actually had a teenage girl live with us for like three and a half years. Um, so that was really precious to, in a way, be her mom for three and a half years. And had we had our own kids, I don't know that we would have taken her in. Um, and then... Um, at that point when we did the testing, we were, she had moved out already. She graduated high school. And <clears throat> so that was 2021 when we got the testing done. And what I recognized through all of that too, and I guess I, I maybe would have wanted to say this a little bit earlier, but at that breaking point for me, after seven years, when I just decided I got to let this dream go, I have to just rest in what God has for me. It was very, very humbling. Um, I think it was, it was a process, but up until that point, just realizing like, I don't deserve anything from God. I deserve absolutely nothing, right? So there, there's absolutely nothing that I could do to earn God's favor, to earn good gifts from God, to deserve anything from him because our sin is so, so great, so, so great that we deserve to die immediately. The breath that you and I are having right now is sustained by God's mercy, whether we're a Christian or not. God is so merciful to us. And I realized, and that's what I think helped me get to that point of just letting go, is I just had this mindset of, I thought that I deserved to have kids. I thought that I earned that. I thought that I had a right to it. Um, and our sin is so, so great. We deserve absolutely nothing from the Lord. And the more that we recognize how sinful we are and how much we deserve God's wrath and how much we deserve death, how much we deserve hell forever and ever, the more precious the good gifts that God gives us is. I think the more we realize our depravity and our need for Jesus, the more we recognize that anything he gives us, even the sun rising on the good and the evil, is a precious gift from the Lord that we don't deserve. The rain that waters the flowers, the ability to see the beautiful sunset or to, <clears throat> to smell delicious food, um, you name it, the ability to be able to hike through the woods or go camping or take a ride on the canoe on the water. Um, so many good things. We deserve absolutely none of it from the Lord. And when I realized really my prideful, prideful heart um, in thinking that, oh, because I've only ever been with one man and I haven't slept with him until after I was married and I'm the first one in my family to do that, I deserve to have kids. I was so, so wrong and it took years for God to help me realize that my heart attitude was like that and to break me of that. And I'm so, so thankful. Um, yeah, so it's just, I think that's one of the biggest lessons that God <clears throat> taught me through all that. So anyways, um, we're at this point, right, since 2021 that Zach and I are just settled in, okay, we can't have our own kids and that's how it is and we'll just keep um you know doing life as we are and see what what God brings to us um and then in it was this last November or December I should say in December of this last year so this past <clears throat> Christmas season 2023 um 
there were some things going on with my health that I was really concerned about. Um, I was I was not sleeping well. I had a lot of pain in my stomach. Um, just several different things that I could list off and. I don't normally go to the doctor. I like to do everything the natural way. Just let your body heal itself, do its own thing. And so when I told my husband that <clears throat> I needed to go to the doctor to figure out what was wrong with me, he was pretty concerned as well because we both know I, I don't go to the doctor for, for things. Um, anyway, so I went to the doctor and I told her what was going on. And she, you know, did a couple tests and turns out um, I was pregnant. <laughs> I did not, I was dumbfounded. I was absolutely dumbfounded. So I, she told me and she actually asked me with my symptoms that I was explaining to her. I said, I don't know what's going on. I feel absolutely terrible. There's no way I'm pregnant though. She's like, are you sure? I was like, no, no, I'm, it's not that. I can guarantee you it's not that. She's like, well, let's just take a test to rule it out. I'm like, okay, I'll humor you, right? I'll take the test. So everything else out, checked out fine. And she said, but that pregnancy test was a strong positive. And I was in such disbelief. I just sat there. Blank face and started just crying blank face. And so she <laughs> was a little concerned. She said, are you happy? Are you sad? I said, I don't know. And then I realized what I said and I was like, okay, I have to explain myself. So I just said, I am, I'm very happy, but I'm, I'm shocked. And I told her why at this point. So I showed her the test results that my husband and I got and when she looked at that, she confirmed. She said, yeah, looking at that, I would not hold my breath at getting pregnant. But sure enough, um, I was pregnant and that made sense as to why I was not feeling good. And I kind of thought, you know, when I wasn't feeling good, all these symptoms, I thought, you know, if I could get pregnant, this would be a sign that I'm pregnant. But since I can't get pregnant... I should not be feeling this way and something is wrong. Um, and so then it all made sense. All the symptoms I was having, how I was feeling. And so then fear set in. Um, you know, I, I didn't think that I could have kids. And at this point, I'm 30 years old. I had just turned 30. Um, and so I'm like, I'm, I'm older. We had waited this long to have kids. It was so hard to even get pregnant. Um, and there was fear that set in, <clears throat> but also just a peace, um, such a peace for God's providence and his goodness. And again, a reminder, you know what? I don't deserve anything. I deserve absolutely nothing from the Lord. And everything that he gives me is his mercy beyond what I deserve. Um, and so I am happy to report today that I am just over 30 weeks pregnant so here's my baby bump. So excited. So, so excited. And the pregnancy has been going really well. I have waited all my life for this. So, so excited for this dream that's coming true that I never thought would happen. Um, it's such a gift from the Lord. And I think, you know, I wouldn't take it back. I wouldn't take all the sorrow back, all the tears, all the heartache over the years. Um, I wouldn't take it back because that whole process, God used to sanctify my heart. Um, sorry for the squeaking. I have some dogs that are playing with their toys in the background. <clears throat> um, but just a, such a sweetness in, in, again, my relationship with my husband that, you know, I'm so thankful that him and I just had so much time, just the two of us together. But also with God just breaking me down um, over the years and showing me his goodness. I wouldn't take any of that back. And um, in those moments, so I'm just like, God, why is it happening this way? Why are, why are you doing this? Why don't I have this? Um, you know, it's hard in those moments to really understand God's plan. 
Um, but looking back, I see so much wisdom in it, right? He was refining my heart. And that's the important thing, right? This life is so short. This life is so, so short. Um, and it's going to disappear before you know it. And what's going to last is our souls, right? The relationship we have with the Lord or lack thereof. And that's something that's going to last forever and ever and ever and ever and ever. <clears throat> I'm so thankful for those years that God um, drew me closer to him to get to know him more, to get to understand his, his sovereignty more, his control over all things, his wisdom, um, his love and his mercy, and to show me my sin, to break my heart down, um, to give me such a humble heart. To And I'm not going to be a perfect mom. Nobody is. I know that. But over the years to be able to even prepare my heart to better mother and care for our daughter. Um, so it's a girl, her name is Kylie Joy and she's due on August 10th. Um, and that's actually the reason why I'm not at camp this summer is just with a, just being unsure how things would go with my pregnancy and needing to save some time off um, work to be able to focus on, um, you know, doctor's appointments and needing that time in case I need it later after the baby is born. But anyways, so that's my story. Um, to sum, sum it all up, again, I just love to be able to share that. Um, and I guess the biggest thing I want you all to take away from this is that God is so good. He is so, so good. And I even, even if he hadn't given me a child, I would say that there's so much wisdom in what God does. In the moment, when we don't understand it, we don't like it, and it's hard, uh, we need to be, first of all, in prayer. Like, go to God with those things. We need to be in the Word to remind ourselves of truth and to allow the Lord to do what He will in our hearts to sanctify us, to show more of who He is, and to show more of who we are, that we can shape um, our hearts to really follow the Lord in a way that's honoring. So, um, God is good. He's faithful. He is in control of all things. And we deserve absolutely nothing from the Lord. And everything that he gives us is, is a mercy. So thank you for letting me share my story. Um, do with that what you will. I hope you enjoy the rest of camp. And I'm looking forward to hopefully someday sending my daughter to Evergreen Bible Camp as well. <laughs> Bye, everybody.